History is crammed with numerous tales about mythical creatures like giants, demons, angels, and catastrophes. Likewise, it has many stories about how the earth was created by the gods and humans came into existence. But along with these tales, there are many mysteries involved. At first, it might be challenging to notice, but the Book of Enoch might help people know about a time and mysteries they did not know existed. But unfortunately, this book is not considered a part of divinely enlightened scripture for the majority of Christian denominations. Hello and welcome back to the Abandoned Archaeologist again, the channel to learn all about ancient archaeological findings. Today we're going to talk about the Book of Enoch, which is banned from the Bible but reveals shocking mysteries of our history. This surely has sparked your interest, so let's get going with our video. But before we begin, to get your attention, we have a question you can answer at the end of the video by watching it. What are the three places Enoch travels in the Book of Enoch? Write down your answer in the comment section and see if you got it right. Here we begin with our video. The Book of Enoch is a Hebrew apocalyptic from the ancient period with a religious text attributed to Enoch, Noah's great-grandfather. The book contains unique information on the origins of Nephilim and demons, why the Genesis flood was morally necessary, why some angels fell from heaven, and a prophetic exposition of the Messiah's thousand-year reign. There are three books in total, although none of the three books is considered canonical scripture by most Jewish or Christian bodies. Instead, they are attributed to Enoch, including the unique works 2 Enoch and 3 Enoch. The older sections of 1 Enoch, mostly the Watcher's Book, of the text are thought to date from 300 to 200 BC, while the most recent part, Book of Parables, is thought to date from 100 BC. Various Aramaic fragments discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls and Koine Greek and Latin fragments demonstrate that Jews and early Near Eastern Christians were aware of the Book of Enoch. In addition, some 1st and 2nd century authors cited this book, as in the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs. Some of the story's content was also familiar to the authors of the New Testament. A brief passage from 1 Enoch is cited in the New Testament Epistle of Jude and attributed to Enoch the Seventh from Adam. However, this passage from 1 Enoch is a midrash on Deuteronomy. The Dead Sea Scrolls preserved several copies of the earlier sections of 1 Enoch. Apart from Beta Israel, it is not part of the Jewish biblical canon, Ethiopian Jews, while the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Church, as well as the Eritrean Orthodox Tawahido Church, regard the Book of Enoch as canonical some other Christian groups regard it as non-canonical or non-inspired. However, they may accept it for historical or theological reasons. Watcher's Book This primary section of the Book of Enoch recounts the fall of the Watchers, the angels who fathered Nephilim, and Enoch's travels in the heavens. Western scholars say this section was written in the 4th or 3rd century BC. According to the introduction to the Book of Enoch, Enoch is a man whose eyes were opened by God to see a vision of the Holy One in heavens, which the God's sons showed, and from them they heard everything and knew what they saw, but won't come to pass for this generation, instead for a generation yet to come. It talks about God appearing on Mount Sinai with His hosts passing judgment on mankind, but it also tells us about the luminaries who rise and set in their own order and time and never change. Observe how all the trees appear to have withered in the winter and shed all their leaves, except the chosen 14 trees, which don't lose their foliage, either retain the old foliage for two or three years until the new comes. The book also discusses how God predetermined everything and what happened in His own time as a result, sinners will perish, but the great and good will live on in light, joy, and peace. 
and all his works continue in this manner from year to year in perpetuity as do all the tasks that they perform for him and their tasks do not change but are carried out exactly as God has decreed. The book's first section depicts fallen angels interaction with humans. Semiazes forces the other 199 fallen angels to marry human women to beget us children. And their leader, Samjaza, said to them, I fear ye will not do this deed and alone have to pay the penalty of a great sin. Let us all take an oath and bind ourselves by similar imprecations, not to abandon the plan, but instead do the thing, they all replied. Then they all oathed together and bound themselves to it by mutual imprecations. And there were two hundred in total who descended in the Jared days on the summit of Mount Hermon, which they named Mount Hermon, as he had sworn and bound themselves upon it. As a result, the Nephilim, Genesis, or Anakim, Anak, the giants are created, as described in the book, and they become pregnant, and they bore great giants, three hundred ells tall, who devoured all man's acquisitions. The giants turned on them when men could no longer support them and devoured humanity, and they started to sin against beasts, birds, reptiles, and fish, devouring one another's flesh and drinking one another's blood. It also discusses the fallen angels' teaching of humans, particularly Azazel. And Azazel taught men how to make knives, swords, shields, and breastplates, as well as the earth's metals, and the art of working with them, and making bracelets or ornaments, and the use of antimony, as well as the beautification of the eyelids, and all kinds of costly stones or all coloring tinctures. And much godlessness arose, and they committed fornication, were led astray, and went corrupt in all ways. Then the Highest, the Holy and Great One, spoke and brought Uriel to the son of Lamech, saying to him, Visit Noah, and tell him I have sent you. Hide thyself, and reveal that the end that is approaching, the entire earth will be destroyed. A deluge will come upon the entire earth and destroy everything on it. And now instruct him so that he may flee and his seed may be preserved for all future generations. Later, God commands Raphael to imprison Azazel and cast him in an opening in the desert, place rough and jagged rocks on him, cover him with darkness and keep him there forever, covering his face so he doesn't see the light, and he will be cast into the fire on the day of the great judgment. And heal the earth that the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the earth's healing, that they might succeed in healing the plague, and that all the children may not perish as a result of all the secrets that the watchers have revealed and taught their sons. And the entire earth has been corrupted by the works taught by Azazel, all sin is attributed to him. Michael is directed by the Lord to bind the fallen angels. Go bind Samjaza as well as his associates who have united themselves with women and defiled themselves in all their uncleanness. The Lord said to Michael, And when their sons have slain each other and they get to see their loved ones destruct, bind them fast in the earth's valleys for almost seventy generations until the day of their judgment and consummation, until the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. In those days, they will be led away to the abyss of fire, to torment, and the prison where they will be imprisoned for all eternity. And whoever is condemned and destroyed will be bound with them now. Book of Parables The Book of Parables comprises chapters 37 to 71 of the Book of Enoch. These chapters are the focus of scholarly debate. The Book of Parables is somehow based on the Book of the Watchers. Still, it represents a later development of the concept of final judgment and eschatology, concerned with the fate of fallen angels and evil kings of the earth. The Book of Parables refers to the eschatological protagonist 
as the Son of Man, who is also known as the Chosen One, Righteous One, and Messiah, and sits on the glory's throne in the final judgment. The Son of Man was first used as a definite title in Jewish writings in one Enoch. It has been proposed that the entire book of parables is a later edition. However, the book of parables is dated to the 3rd century in 1976 by J.T. Millick, citing similarities with the Sibylline oracles. He believed that the events in the book were based on historical events between 260 and 270 CE. This theory is consistent with the beliefs of many 19th century scholars, including Luck, Hoffman, Wise, and Philip, 1857. According to this theory, the chapters were written by a Jewish Christian in later Christian times to strengthen Christian beliefs by using Enoch's authoritative name. Michael Nipp followed Millick's reasoning in a 1979 article, claiming that a later date was more likely because no fragments of chapters 37 to 71 were discovered at Qumran. Nib would expand on this theme in later works. Unfortunately, chapters 37 to 71 are also missing from the Greek translation. In addition to being missing from Qumran, scholars have yet to agree on the Book of Parables composition date. Most scholars have rejected Millick's date, or as late as 270 CE. According to David W. Souter, the Book of Parables was written between 50 BC and 117 AD. In 1893, Robert Charles determined that Chapter 71 was a later edition. He would later change his mind and place the work between 94 and 64 BC. According to Emil G. Hirsch's 1906 article in the Jewish Encyclopedia, the Son of Man appears in the book but never in the actual material. Instead, it appears in the Noachian Interpolations, where it clearly has no other meaning than man. The title of the angels is misused or corrupted by the work's author. As per the Book of Parables, the title Son of Man is interpreted by Charles as referring to a supernatural being, a messiah not of human descent. Some technical sense was there of a supernatural messiah and judge of the world in the part of the Book of Enoch, popularly known as the Similitudes, Universal Dominion, and pre-existence are predicated on him. He sits on God's throne, which is also his own. Though Charles didn't agree, these passages show Christian redaction and emendation, according to Emil G. Hirsch. Many scholars believe the Noachian author's passages in the Book of Parables are interpolations. These passages appear to disrupt the narrative's flow. According to Daryl D. Hanna, these passages are not entirely new interpolations, but derived from an earlier Noah Apocryphon. Some interpolations, he believes, refer to Herod the Great and are dated around 4 BC. With the theory of Noachian interpolations, supported by most scholars, most scholars now believe that chapters 70 and 71 were added later, partly or entirely. This is the third parable of Enoch, concludes chapter 69. Enoch, like Elijah, is widely assumed to have been raised to heaven by God while still alive, but some argue that the text refers to Enoch dying naturally and ascending to heaven. According to the text, Enoch was previously enthroned in heaven. Chapters 70 and 71 contradict earlier messages in the parable in which the Son of Man is described as a separate entity. In addition, the parable shifts from third to first person singular. The theory narrated in chapters 70 and 71 is later editions rejected by James H. Charlesworth. He believes that no additions to the book of parables were made. According to his previous work, the majority of scholars agreed with him. What was the message of Enoch? Some scholars place the date between 170 BC and the first century BC. This section can be divided into five subsections, which were combined by the final redactor. Apocalypse of Weeks This section, which is usually dated to the first half of the second century BC, describes the history of the world through ten periods called weeks, seven of which concern the past 
and three of which concern the future events. The final judgment. The climax occurs in the seventh week, when a new heaven appears, and many weeks will be there without numbers, and all shall be in righteousness and goodness. Exhortation. This brief list of exhortations to follow righteousness, given by Enoch to his son, Methuselah, appears to be a bridge to the following subsection. Epistles. The first part of the epistle describes the Lord's wisdom, the final reward and the punishment of evil, and the two distinct paths of righteousness and unrighteousness. Then there are six oracles against sinners, the testimony of all creation against them, and the assurance of their fate after death. According to Boccaccini, the epistle is divided into two parts, a proto-epistle with a theology similar to the Qumran group's deterministic doctrine, and a later part emphasizing personal responsibility, frequently describing sinners as wealthy and the just as oppressed. The Birth of Noah This section appears in the fragments of Qumran, separated from the previous text, giving the impression that it is an appendix. It describes the deluge and Noah, born with the appearance of an angel. Like other small portions of one Enoch, this text is most likely derived from a separate book, but was arranged by the editor as the direct speech of Enoch himself. Conclusion This second appendix was not discovered in Qumran and is thought to have been written by the final editor. It emphasizes the generation of light, in contrast to the sinners doomed to darkness. Finally, it's all about the Book of Enoch and the mysteries it holds. And yes, have you guessed the answer to the question we asked? The question was, what were the three places Enoch traveled to in the Book of Enoch? And the answer is that when God took Enoch, he saw the mysteries of the universe and the whole future fate of humanity. Share your views below and subscribe for more.